Hello and welcome to the York Creators Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's guest is Jeff Clark. Jeff is the co-owner of the Art of Protest Gallery, an urban contemporary art gallery based in Little Stonegate. Formerly a photography teacher and a practicing photographer when he gets the time, we discuss the work Jeff is drawn to, both as an artist himself and as a curator. We also chat about what a digital revolution means for our town centres, its effect on retail and social spaces, the need for story behind any good work or product, and the need to create social happenings in our city. Jeff, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So you could have opened a gallery anywhere in the world. Why did you open one in York? Straight in there, Ben. One of the reasons I'm here in York is because I felt that there was demand for something which was younger, um, probably more cultural, or more culturally relevant than what's currently here. I mean, York is one of the largest tourist cities. It claims to be the largest tourist city, but then again, so does Manchester and Edinburgh, yeah. uh, outside of London. You know, 65% of trade in most of art is tourism, and New York does have it. So we put ourselves on, the, on, on, a, on a main walk, and we went out there with big window displays, and we put up a big finger to the anti-establishment element with, you know, really cultural, interesting art. The one really was to go, hey, we're here, you know, come and look at us. You know, like us, don't like us, it doesn't matter, but what we want you to do is feel that there is something here for the yesteryear's misspent youth who are now, you know, the people who have got the professional jobs who want to buy into something which isn't from a big commercial gallery and isn't more crafty. You know, York has lots of that, yeah. but there's something that there that hadn't been catered for. So that's where we started out. So you saw there's an appetite, but what's in it for you? Like, why? what gets you up in the morning to actually want to do this? Because it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yes, it is. I think it's, suppose it's, it's every day you've got to wake up and believe that you can achieve something. And I would like to think that, you know, the gallery is more than bricks and mortar and pieces of art. It's a movement, it's an energy, it's a, you know, it's a spread in a social consciousness, which we have. It's socially and politically relevant artwork. But what we know is that if someone comes in to look at art, that they're going to be afraid of some stuff. We're not picket line element of protest. And what we wanted to do was go somewhere which someone can just come in and go, I think that's visually beautiful. And then they can go, oh, listen, I want to put it on my wall. Oh, I've just been by, I'm buying my Levi jeans, I'm buying my, I'm going to go buy a couch. And you're like, okay, how about this piece of art? And they go, well, it would fit. And then you go, do you know what it means? And they go, no, tell me. And that's the opportunity to then, you know, maybe get a bit of the good fight across because the stories that are told about the artwork, which sits above mantle, which sits behind the fireplace, which sits beside people having their dinner on an evening, is the stories that we tell them and the stories of the artists, the fight they've had to go through and the reason that they will have a voice and what they want to do. So what gets me up on a morning is the fact that I can spread a little bit better. I can do something that's good. And I can do this and I can feed the artists. We can feed my babies, we can feed my business partner babies and hopefully we can keep spreading the good energy. So what are you looking for in the artists? Um, again, that's a good question and I, I'd say that everything is open, but the, my speciality is the underrepresented arts of the last 30 years. So that is the influences of street art, that's a capital element, tattoo culture, advertising, marketing, illustration, um, the cultures of you know society, which again we've grown up in and around, um, so you have a relationship with it. So I want my artists to probably be doing something that someone else isn't. It doesn't mean that you know they, they if they paint a butterfly that they're not allowed in. Oh, you're not allowed in. You're not cool enough. No, it's about how have you done that? Why have you done it? What are you? What's your identity? And I generally think with business, as with that, if you can't sum that up in one sentence, you're confused about it yourself. Yeah. I'm very really clear. It's the underrepresented arts the last 30 years. It's things that aren't being catered for. Do you still get time to create work yourself? Oh, the, the, I want to say yes, but the honest answer is no. Okay. Um, are you happy with that? No, or? no, no. Because no. it, it can go two ways. Some people are very happy with, um, they see running a business as creative, because obviously yeah. you're always problem solving, you're always making things, and they think mm -hmm. actually... To be doing that is quite fulfilling, and other people's like, I just want some time just to disappear off for two I months, think, go into I a cabin, and I think that make I, I, all I want to do is that you know, be able to create, and you know, obviously, I'm inspired daily by the things around me. And my job is to find artists and hunt them down and find the right artwork for the walls and for clients. So, I'm always looking at things and thinking, oh, Wow, that's amazing, you know, and that would you know, help me adjust my own work. 
I want to think that every day, you know, I'm in the the school of learning and I'm picking up things. So I'd say for even now, if I was you know, massively optimistic, every day is a learning day, which is helping me put into my own work. You know, if I was, you know, a realist, there's a bit of me which says, you know, maybe I'm not practically practicing it. And again, I'd, I'd look to my, you know, previous my, my mentor business partner Craig Cumble he's fantastic and he, he I hear him say things you know being an artist is just doing it and you know you can't question whether or not someone's an artist if they're making something because they are the, the quality and the caliber is you know negligible and we talk about that but are you making it and I say I make really good stuff I mean really interesting really integral are you doing it no so do I qualify as an artist I'd say maybe not for the last six months Okay. But, you know, do I do I feel artistic and do I want to create? Yes, I do. So if we look at the time when you did have time to create, yeah. uh, what, were, were there any particular themes that you were, felt you were more drawn to? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a photographer. Um, and that is, you know, I went from teaching photography, um, really loads of different disciplines, but it was all basically started out on film. And I love film photography. I love the analog element of it. It was something which was, you know, so, so pure. The fact that it could be so rubbish and you could get no, 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 so exciting. The build up, the anticipation. I go get them, and they're all pants. And yeah. Oh my god, that's. I've um, literally just had that. I bought a Super 8 camera, yeah. shot a load of stuff, sent yeah. it back, sent it off. It came back as all overexposed. Oh yeah, so and you're like, <laughs> oh my god, and it doesn't matter how good you are. It just you still you still get that. And you're like, oh, man. And especially if you go from digital to analog and then you're used to rattling off and you think, well, I'll, I'll take some to be sure. And you know, the, the sun's creeped over it. And I think then, you know, the craft element for me goes into the studio and you go into the black and white and I'm processing lab and I'm doing it myself and I'm dodging and I'm burning and I'm playing with it. And that's when I lose myself when you've got the hours in there to play with it. But from a content point of view, most of mine is all affected by travel. They've been fortunate enough to go to lots of, you know, wonderful places. Um, and I'd say also not so wonderful, and really painful places to look at and to study and to document, be it wildlife and people and lands. And so to capture that and then to come back and, you know, I think the hardcore, one of the things we don't do as, you know, as photographers, we don't sit and stare at our own work. Maybe we don't actually absorb the place that we're going because you know it's like how many times do people go to gigs and they stare at the phone they watch the gig through the phone and you know i decided to put down my camera when i walked up mountains now because i just i can't i can't not look at the landscape i'd feel yeah. like you know I'd, I'd feel like a guilt and i can't what am i doing why am i going up here to not look at it i think if i'm going to go and study it and understand it then i'll stay up there because yeah. i don't steal my moments so the thing that pulls me back i suppose is that i love to see how landscape and people work together, um, you know, understand the geography and the philosophy of somewhere, understand why people do what they do, the movements, and you know, why have everyone, why have we all got, why have all those people lived together? Why do they live on the hill? When you capture a moment, it just that that question is just hangs there. Yeah, I think it's quite a big misconception about photography that the photograph is the thing, and yeah. I've heard quite a few photographers say, like, no, it's all wrong. Like, mm -hmm. you don't. Photography makes you go and do stuff. No. Say if I was taking a photo of you mm -hmm. um, and you take a photo and go, here it is. It's mm -hmm. like, no, it's not that thing. It's here it is here. Yeah. And that's just a little that's a memory it. of it. It's, it's this creation, isn't it? It's the, um, you know, the one thing about the photography, as you know very well, is, you know, manipulating the environment, controlling it. That's land artistry, you know. That's to, you know, change the direction of a stream. That's to make a you know, sculpture out of leaves and then go up high and photograph it. That's to, you know, make sure that the direction of the people that are walking somewhere are walking into the lights, which silhouettes them. That's you controlling the environment. The actual pressing of the button is the control or manu of an element of a camera, isn't it? It's your shutter speed, your aperture, mm. right? So, but that control, that, that moment where you breathe in, you hold, you get the shot. That's the excitement, that's the energy, and that is the creative end. And that's why, you know, with that, I think that craft must meet concept in a perfect balance. It has to, because that is where we really get the result which inspires the audience who are looking at it. Yeah. You know, wow, that's really amazing. I'm really blown away by it. And you know, that's how they did it. I love it. So coming back to the gallery, what are some of the projects that you've got at the moment? Present is we're working on a very exciting show with Static. And Static are two, uh, two guys and they initially they, they came from Scarborough and they had no outlet for their art. So they went down to London um, 12 years ago and they currently work at Walthamstow and they've exhibited in Japan, the US, Australia, 
um, all over different places in Europe. And they're very exciting. They do pattern making and design. Um, Tom, one of the duo, has just recently been over to Palestine and painted on the walls over there, cool. there under the Banksy Museum. And that's all very cool. So what we've done is we've brought them to York for a show, which opens on the 19th of October, actually it's the 18th, which is the uh, preview evening. And we're doing an installation where they are going to paint the whole floor of the gallery. Oh, and that nice. would be cool. So we'll do is really creative. Under, underneath you, we're doing a mural. So when anyone comes, they can go stand on the work of that, standing on the shoulders of great men, I believe, we'll call it. <laughs> but they're also painting for us down at Brew York, because you know what we're doing is at the beer colour up there, we've started, we've got three murals up. We'll be getting some major internationals there. So we're bringing really, really cool street art to York. Walls are subjective and difficult to come after in York because the historical element, but there are some areas we can do it. And if people want to go and drink and celebrate and be able to enjoy beautiful art, Brew York's a great place to do it. And yeah, why definitely. wouldn't we colour it in? So we're starting out doing some stuff there. So static will be painting there and they'll be doing that. So we'll be having a you know two week exhibition with them, which would be really cool. So static are the first ones up to do that. Um, a little bit in the future, we've got um, a lady called Joe Peel. And Joe Peel is um, an artist from Sheffield. She's an urban landscape artist, if you want. She uses, you know, industry elements and she's looking at the confectionery industry. And obviously to mine, jumps to Terry's and Nestle. Yeah, it's interesting, but there's the, the Tay and Lyle, there's the Cabri's element, and it's going to really pull back to the Quaker roots and elements of slavery, and interesting how, you know, the sugar element controlled and manipulated the seas and how we got mm. there. She might be using industry elements to be able to put that together. Um, we're talking about an installation-led exhibition where we might do some Willy Wonka elements, might be a golden ticket, you might end up in a lift, who knows? Mm, cool. But we have to come in and check it out. What's your opinion on York? Do you think things are changing? Um, you know, what's the creative scene doing well? What do you think could be better? I mean, I'm I'm 35 years young as of Sunday, and um, you know, I've seen York over the years and progressed. And you know, once upon a time, whilst working in the pasty shop in York and King Square. <laughs> Being excited, the fact that Picture and Piano was opening, just because it gave some sort of visual culture with more interesting drinks and it could serve wine on an evening, you know, back in 2000. Well, that, that was that was quite that was quite interesting. But obviously, now we look at something like that, the the corporate commercial giants with their their claw controlling <laughs> things, and we don't like them. But what we do like is the fact that they started something. The likes of VJs, the energy. Now. Since 2000, you know, we were quite a long time on. And what we've had since then is this growth and this appetite to do certain things. I would say certain areas of it stagnated. But in the past two years, we've seen, you know, the universities, you know, really start to push on and actually create jobs for the, the, the young who go through it. You know, 9% population then suddenly being refed into certain areas where there's actually somewhere for them to go work, retaining a population. And then young people, you know, such as yourself, doing creative things in the city. A city centre needs to provide entertainment, you know. Retail is something people can do on the internet, and it's something they will continue to do. And I think we're at the start of a digital revolution, not at the end of it. So this renaissance period we're going to go through is interesting, but what people want to do is they want to come together. They want content. So that is something the theatre is now. York being a two-square-mile radius... Everyone can come together, can create a real family element and energy about it, as well as the tourist thing that pulls into it. So with new things popping up, be it Spark or it's be Brew York or it'll just be Fosgate in general, it'll be the star Micklegate going on or it'll be the quarter where I'm working in the Minster Quarter, you suddenly start to see so many wonderful things coming about and you see the faces of thinking, do you know what, I can, I can do a business here. And that's sheer determination. And I really appreciate anyone who's doing that because actually what it does is then, it means the audience for York, where they go after it, you know, where they go, no, look, here's another family and, uh, you know, 60 plus year olds who are going to come and stay with them. So that's great. I love them. They're great. And they are really relevant and they're really important. Um, but what actually what we need is we need the, the people who are inventive, um, who want to set up business, who want to compete with that of Leeds or Manchester. So if you want to retain them, We've got to provide things good enough for them to do and be entertained by. So do, why do I think of the new things going on? I think it's very different to what it was even two years ago. And I celebrate and applaud anyone who's doing something like that. Yeah. You tend to get quite a few people being very negative about, you know, shop shutting and places mm -hmm. like that. But I actually think it's quite a good thing because 
you know, as you said, people mm-hmm. people don't need to buy as much stuff that they've got. So retail is obviously going to decrease. Mm-hmm. But if you can have more spaces where people can get together, where you can have social gatherings, where you can have community, mm-hmm. put that back into the city, that's definitely positive. Absolutely. And we're never going to run out of things for people to buy because you'll just make new things. And that's it. And if you look at, like, craft beer is a really good example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you look definitely. five, ten years ago, maybe even after that, um, you know, you just you buy your beer, you wouldn't really think much of it. No, no, but no. Then, Terrible beer. Just, just, yeah, just fizzy, fizzy, fizzy <laughs> stuff, fizzy shit. Just to get it out. Yeah. But then suddenly you get beer and you put a story to it. You say, oh, this was brewed down the road and this was brewed mm-hmm. here and then you put some nice design on it and suddenly there's a whole new booming industry. The theatre, the, the creative. We all want a story. And in a world where everything's already exposed to us, we're looking at Instagram 10 times a day. It's like that, boom, boom, boom. What's that? Facebook advertisement. It's all telling us it. So we want something bespoke. I'm looking around. How do I do it? How do I not lose my human interaction? So creating social happenings is a really exciting thing that we can do. And yeah, do you know, maybe we don't need another next. Maybe we don't need another River Island. Maybe we don't need another X, Y, and Z. But actually they are there to cater for things. But what we can do is, you know, the younger generation and, and you know, wanting and just consumers. What do we want to consume? I don't need another. I like wearing, you know, one pair of jeans. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I like, I'm in my black t-shirt, you know, blue shirt. That's me. I just wear my thing. I'm quite happy with that. I've got my personality and I like to share it with people. And where can I do that? I can do it in a social place. So it's, it's a change in social um, behavior. And I think a really way, good way to just, you know, summarize that is to say, when people say, well, it's not normal. You say, well, it's a new type of normal mm. and you'll get used to it. And just as we've got used to someone else's. So I'd say that's an interesting thing. So what advice would you give to a young artist who's at the beginning of their career? Mm-hmm. Well, if I can swear, I'd say what my mother said to me, never let the bastards grind you down. Okay. Um, it's the first thing you want to do is if you want to do it, it's just to do it every day. And I think if you, you know, if you want to do something, you've got to keep going with it because it's really easy to be defeatist. So the advice is, you know, first of all, pick something which is, you know, the best thing you can do and then make it so it's your personality in there because we're always trying to make things to please people as we just spoke about the consumer element because you want people to want it but do people want something that they're trying to be force fed no they want something original so my advice is to make something original but hone your craft you know get your concept right why am i doing it but i always ask to an artist they come to me and they show me the portfolio and they go well, so that's really nice. That's some, I can see where you've done that. I can see the artist's hand. That's very creative. That's interesting. Why do you do it? They shrug their shoulders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not good enough. I think you need to know why you're doing it. Are you doing it because you've got no money and you need to make something? Because there are lots of people who do that. Are you doing it because you, you're just inspired and you can't do it? Have you stared at a leaf every day? Did someone die and you wrote, heard a poem? You know, what, what's your story here? It's nothing like a broken heart to make someone make something. You know, but let's hear it. And let's hear the reason. Because, again, aspect is that if you've done something, you need to know why they've done it. And actually, if you're saying, oh, I don't want anyone to look at my artwork, well, that's great. And that's saying, you know, are you anything if someone doesn't acknowledge it? And I think that's a different object for philosophy. But don't be confident and do it. And never let being knocked stop you. Be inspired, be creative, do it to the best of your ability and do it every day. Are there any tools or resources that you recommend? That's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, that's just, a, you know, what's your environment? And I think, you know, the tools are your environment. So don't be afraid to, you know, look at what you're creating. Too many people think art and they say to them, oh, I can't draw. I'm like, wow, neither can I, neither can lots of people. But they still qualify as artists because they do stuff. Shepherd Ferry or Obey Giant, if you want to call him, um, the world's largest artist, you know, in urban art outside of Banksy, you know, doesn't draw. Fantastic artist, amazingly creative, uses space like I've not known it, uses imagery like, you know, the stuff I've not seen. And, you know, he goes and grabs hold of his environment. He goes and uses, he was worked, he came from a skateboard shop and then they could print on the bottom of a skateboard and so then he created his own imagery and he did it. Use the resources. If you can't afford to buy a pen, draw on the back of the leaf with a, with a, with a, with a stick. If you've got the desire, you can do it. Um, you know, I think spray paint is just an interesting medium. I mean, I'm really fascinated by it. I think acrylic pens, 
are really good to write on walls with. I think using space, which isn't, you know, other use for anything else and turning it into something different is, is a fantastic thing to do. And I suppose the difference between being a commercial artist and producing something which can go into someone's home and actually just being an artist and wanting to make something, they're very different things, although they can work hand in hand. So my advice is to anyone who wants to do it, just do it. Mm. If you feel inspired, go and do it. Don't wait for someone long to come and give you a permission slip. You know, seek forgiveness rather than ask permission if you've got to do it. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's got something and everyone's got a story to tell. Yeah, like, yeah, no matter yeah. how bland That's you might think it is. Yeah. You know, if you've got hands or even people who don't have hands, they make amazing art with their feet. They do. And, you know, we see people do it all the time. And I think, you know, I keep coming back to that. I think it's the concept, it's the driver. Why? Why am I doing it? Because I have to. Because if I don't, I'm going to explode. I need to do it. Well, that's good. Then do it. And then you find out things. Because do you know what? Just like children and animals, we learn through play. So play with it. Enjoy it. Bit thing again. Create things. Make mistakes. It's okay. You know what? Mistakes comes interesting things. And someone else might have a different perspective on it. It's fine. But you've yeah. got to go ahead and do it. Because that's how we learn. I think there's often a feeling as well of like, I can't do it because, and you always find that limitation. Mm. But it's really interesting. I totally, it's, it's a, do you know it's an age thing? It's like a pressure of society. Because we think art is about drawing with a pencil or a pen. Art is so much more than that, what yeah. creativity is. You can be creative in the kitchen, you know? You can be creative with a friend, with a loved one. It doesn't matter. You can be creative with your ideas in life in general. And I think that's what we should be doing. Now I'm down looking at the floor right now. Obviously my mind is drifting. So it always does. And I'm looking at the wires and I'm thinking that's an interesting pattern. Once I picked it up and took it off that, you know, the, the carpet, which is all the parallel lines and I put it on a black and white wall. But that's interesting. Does anyone like it? Is it good? Is it craft? I don't know. But it was interesting for me to look at maybe. And I think that inquisitive element of our mind is the one where I first ask the question. And it's not getting too hung up on the details as well. Yeah. It's like if you just think I'm going to make something every day, it doesn't matter what it's yeah, like. Right. You finish one thing, you go on to the next, you're not thinking was it good, was yeah. it bad? I mean, how, how many videos and photographs have you run through in your life which just have not felt to your satisfactory area, but does it ever stop you making more? No. No. Would it? No. And it's, you know, it's a way of expressing yourself. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, we feel quite controlled in an environment in this society, mm. in any society. It's always been quite controlling. Oh, whatever the people thinking, you know, you have this little friend sat in your shoulder. <laughs> you're like, no, stop telling me what to do. I can think <laughs> freely. <laughs> so other than popping into the gallery, where can people see the work? OK, so you can go online uh, at protestgallery.com and please do visit or join our Instagram uh, at protestgallery. Um, either on Facebook, Instagram, you can find us on Twitter, although I don't update it overly. <laughs> but if you go find us and look at the artwork, it's it's really interesting. We update it all the time. And it's not about obviously force feeding people, you know, art that we're selling. That's about giving social concepts of how it's done, where the artists are painting, what's going on. Um, you know, really interesting. Now we use stories and we, you know, the content that's going on around us, we just, you know, document and create and interesting stuff. But come and see, I think art has to be engaged with. You know, when we've had really, really fortunate to have people come from all around the world just to visit our gallery because there's a point of difference. And I think that, you know, if you're local, if you're in a hundred mile radius, you should definitely come check us out. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much, Ben. You're an excellent host.